الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Most Christians today, by the way, who consider most of the Christians in this country as deviant, they go into places of worship, and you find statues there. We don't worship that black stone. We kiss it because our prophet ordered us to kiss it. So in obedience to him, we kiss it. We don't worship the Kaaba. We just prayed here. The Kaaba is not here. How are we going to worship it when it's thousands of miles away? These are false. Listen, about women being liberated, about the inheritance, I, put, I, I wrote about it in my book. On your way out, take one of those books. This is about Muhammad. This is about the response to the Pope, what he said last year about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You'll have the answer there because you know that women get more money in their half than you think. It's because you don't know what Islam says about it. Anyway, Ibn Ishaq is not the earliest resource about Islam. This is a fabrication. We have different types of resources. Hadith has chains of narrations. Sirah, like Ibn Ishaq, books of stories. They, the, star, the scholars themselves mention many times the story is not good, it's not established. Ibn Ishaq is talking about, they were before him, people who wrote about the Prophet, Thabit al-Bunani, al-Hasan al-Basri, tens of people had books, they had no story about the satanic verses or about Zainab. Also, we have proof why these stories are wrong because we know who fabricated them and when it started, 90 years after the Prophet died. Also, Ibn Ishaq, he mentions him, he says Jesus wasn't crucified. Why do you pick a story you like and remove the others about black magic? Listen. There is no black magic. Prophet thought he was doing something. They did magic work on him. He thought he was doing something which he didn't. It didn't affect his character. It didn't affect his, the words he was saying or the Quran or the revelation. Plus, you're telling me that the, the devil spoke on, on, on uh, his mouth. The same story tells you that. That's what the disbelievers had. How come you keep dancing around this, which is in the story you're quoting, saying this is what they heard. This is not what he said. Go to the same story. Also, it says in the story that the angel came and corrected him. How come you do, you know, you disregard this and go to the other stories? Listen, what you heard today, I tried my best from my side to prove through the negation what he's going to say or some of it. I don't have the time. But they have a lot of other stuff. I promise you, everything can be responded to effectively. They're dancing around the issue. Muhammad resurrected the knowledge and the monotheism that Moses and Jesus said in the Bible. This is what they hate. So they pick, pick this and that and this and that. I don't like this and that. And make a story like to make you, ah, oh, Muhammad is so terrible. Is that why the religion of Islam is knocking at your doors here? You think you can defeat Islam this way? Is this what Muhammad was? No, we told you this is a fabrication from the resources he's using. Some of them said clearly this is a fabricated story. I only mentioned it so people are aware it's fabricated. Also, about, now let's talk about scientific evidence that he's talking about. Is there anything in the Bible that scientifically is not proven to be authentic? I, 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 I lived in Orlando. Go to Orlando, go to that museum they have there, men's, men walking with dinosaurs. Because according to the Bible, 6,000 years ago, Allah created everything on earth. We have bones for dinosaurs. They came up with the genus idea. Men walking with dinosaurs, because the Bible said it. Yeah, can you imagine how much fun the dinosaurs would have had to eat us? <laughs> We'd have died long time ago if we walked with the dinosaurs. About being delusional, it's not true. He thought he was doing something which he didn't and did not affect his prophethood. His prophethood is lies in resurrecting monotheism which Christianity killed. This is the major point. This is why they don't like Muhammad, even though Jesus said, hate your enemies, they hate Muhammad. They don't love, he said, love your enemies. They hate Muhammad, they don't love Muhammad. They don't love Satan. And you keep telling me there are resources, historical resources to prove Jesus was resurrected. Which one? A video? I mean, you can talk all we want about being crucified. Ah, we have this and that and this and that. All of them are not by eyewitnesses. But... You can't tell me there is proof historically Jesus was resurrected. How can you do that? You don't know what the soul is like, like the shooting stars. See, Muhammad is wrong. There are no devils going there. You can't see the devils, man. This is about something of the unseen. If you believe in the tree, you're going to believe in the leaf. But what they're doing, they go to the leaves and say, look at this tree. I see it here. 
He's not wearing his glasses. It's wrong. It's not good. I don't like it. No. Their religion is monotheism, and you have to look to that. All right, well, I've offered two broad arguments this afternoon. I've argued, one, that there's no good evidence for Islam, and two, that there is good evidence against Islam. Uh, here we are at the end of the debate. All of my arguments from my positive case, I think, are standing, and we haven't seen a single argument for Islam that actually works. I'd like to end with a, a personal reflection. As I said in my opening statement, Jesus and Muhammad are the two people I've studied most in my life. I've investigated both Christianity and Islam, and I have tried to refute both Christianity and Islam. The difference between the two for me has been this. After I tried refuting Christianity, I became a Christian. But after I tried refuting Islam, I can't imagine ever becoming a Muslim. Let me explain why. Um, well, later I investigated Islam, um, and I knew that the case for Islam, let me tell you the difference between the case for Christianity and the case for Islam. Uh, when I investigated the case for Christianity, I found that the historical core, the uh, death, resurrection, and deity of Jesus, are on very good grounds historically. And we can go to the earliest historical material, and we find that all the historical data we can find actually supports the Christian view. And this is not what I expected when I was an atheist trying to refute this. If you examine the life of Muhammad, you'll see that he was the greatest, most reliable messenger of God in history, as long as none of the following issues bother you. A, having sex with a nine-year-old girl. B, marrying more women than your own revelations allow. C, receiving revelations that have no other purpose than satisfying your desires. D, marrying the wife of your own adopted son. E, having sex with your slave girls. F, thinking you're demon-possessed. G, becoming suicidal. H, delivering revelations from the devil. I, being the victim of black magic, J, saying things about Jesus that totally contradict all of history, K, repeating stories based on forgeries and passing them off as the word of God, L, assassinating people for criticizing your religion, M, executing people for making fun of you, and beheading hundreds of Jews for trying to defend themselves once they realized they were being eliminated, O, starting a war with Mecca when you had a chance to live in peace in Medina, P, enslaving thousands of people. Q, allowing your followers to rape their female captives. R, taking the most beautiful captives back to your own tent. S, telling your followers it's okay to beat their wives into submission. T, telling your followers that women are stupid and that their testimony is unreliable. U, torturing people for money. V, supporting your religion by robbing people. W, preaching a message of violence and cruelty. X, teaching your followers to believe in a God who only loves them and no one else. Why? Supporting idolatrous practices like kissing the black stone and bowing down to the Kaaba. And Z, keeping more people from knowing the true God than any other person in history. As long as none of that bothers you, Muhammad was clearly reliable. Well, suppose some of those things really do bother me. Suppose I'm not willing to just reinterpret all of those. And here comes the Muslim response. But Christianity is bad. Well, that would be an important topic for debate to, dis to uh, see whether that's true. Uh, and but how many times have we heard tonight, but Christianity, but Moses, but this, but that. But are there scientific errors in the Bible? Look, if there are things in the Bible that seem like they're out of whack with modern science, all I would say is you Christians can't base your argument on the scientific accuracy. You need to get it from somewhere else, like the resurrection. Uh, so I just have n how can anyone believe Muhammad is a prophet of God? I don't know, but God has given us all the freedom to believe whatever we want to believe, my friends. And if you want to believe in Muhammad because it makes you comfortable, or because your parents told you to, or because you just don't have the inclination to challenge what you've been taught, uh, that's up to you. But as for me and my family, we will serve the risen Lord Jesus Christ, uh, both now and forever. And glory be to him uh, forever and ever. Amen. Let's give a hand again to both of our opponents. <clears throat> this question is for David Wood. Can you ask how many people who were born and raised in the Christian tradition read the Quran and become Muslim? Uh, 
Uh, so the question is, how many people raised in the Christian tradition read the Quran and convert to, and convert to Islam? Uh, I have no clue. I would say, uh, well, most Christians do not read the Quran. I think that Christians should read the Quran. I think that Christians should uh, do much more research than they should, especially of all of, uh, of other religions. I, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty bad, uh, the situation, not just in Christianity, but uh, in Islam and in every other religion of the world that people do um, grow up believing whatever they're taught to believe and not explore um, other teachings. So uh, yes, I would say not many Christians do that. I would say uh, not too many Christians become Muslims based on any study of the Quran. I know several people who were raised Christian uh, who became Muslims, and it was rarely, it was rarely um, af after any sort of historical investigation. I know of one person on the planet who ever became a Muslim based on a really uh, careful investigation that I would consider, that I would consider um, uh, a just ground for conversion. Um, but as far as most people, what I hear is, um, you know, I was sick, I was absolute, and by the way, this is a, critic this is a criticism of, uh, of lots of people, but this is a, this is a praise of Muslims. Um, lots of the people I've heard convert say things like, I was just so sick of going around and having guys hooting and hollering at me and so on, and um, I realized that I don't have to deal with this if I become a Muslim. And that, for that, I, can, I commend you, for those of you who uh, have retained a, a higher degree of, of morality. Now, this, I'm not talking about uh, you know, true Christians here. I think true Christians are, are very moral. But um, I give credit where credit is due, and I see, I see why someone who's just fed up with things would, uh, would look for something else. But again, this is, this is never, I've never seen, um, this is not based on careful historical investigation. And I would say that's what's required. So I see why someone would convert uh, for certain reasons, but I would say those might not be the best reasons uh, for converting. Okay, and John, would you like to respond to that? Sure. That works for me. You know, from A, Z, D, A to Z that he told you, they are also good for any prophet you pick in the Bible. If that disqualifies Muhammad, disqualifies all those in the Bible. Millions of people became Muslim in America. Look at these brothers here. Look at these brothers here. More than three to four million native people who were Christian became Muslim. Mention the number. In Africa, Islam has become the largest religion in Africa. In the whole world, the Vatican just admitted a few weeks ago, Islam surpassed Catholicism. You think these people don't read the book? No, we're not Christians, man. You don't read your book. We read our book on a daily, daily basis. If there is a hint of a mistake on it, I'm gonna be the first to say there is a mistake here. Also, poetry, poetry, poetry. It's not poetry, the Quran. You don't even speak Arabic. You don't know what poetry is and the rules of it in Arabic. So don't keep saying it. The same Sirah Ibn Ishaq, I'm gonna quote it now, by the one, one of the disbelievers who used to send people in public to say, Muhammad is not eloquent, the Quran has mistakes. Look what he said, Sirah Ibn Ishaq, the same one he's quoting as proof and he's still claiming it's areas resources when it isn't. One of them said to his people, the leaders of Mecca, Muhammad was a young man among you who was most liked, most truthful. When you saw gray hairs on him and he brought this Quran, you started saying he's a sorcerer. No, by Allah, he's not a sorcerer. We know sorcerers and what they say. You said he's a kahin, a soothsayer. By Allah, he's not, because we know these people and they can't produce anything similar to the Quran. By Allah, he's not a poet. You said he's a poet. He's not a poet because the Quran is more truthful. And we know po po uh, poetry. We know how it is and how it is done. The Quran is nothing like that. In the first statement, I mentioned that his cousin said, Muhammad told us to be monotheistic, to pray, to fast, to give charity, to be truthful in our speech, to be good to our neighbors, to be those who are not sinners. And this is what Muhammad وسلم, was about. Okay, we have another question, and this one um, we'll start with um, Jalal. This person writes, the Bible says kissing an object is worship, and they quote the source, 1 Kings 19.18. Why then did Muhammad kiss one, and why did Umar have problems? Um, 
does this, is this the same Bible that the Catholics are reading? You know that 80% of Catholics today, I mean Christians today are Catholic or Orthodox, and they kiss all this stuff. Go tell them that before you tell me. The Bible is not my book, it's your book. It was written by Allah, it was written by people who are not Allah, I'm telling you. So you can bring it as proof to, against me because you wouldn't believe the book is uh, authentic to begin with. It's fabricated, it's forged, and I'm gonna talk about it in the next section. You have to understand that in Islam, the acts of worship are very defined. We don't bow to the Kaaba. It's our direction of prayer. We don't have the Kaaba here. We make the prayer here. We made it here just before you came towards the Kaaba as the direction of prayer. If anyone tells you we worship it, he's a liar. I'm telling you because we don't worship Muhammad. We don't worship the black stone. Why would you uh, not uh, kiss the black stone? Why, why would you not obey your prophet? Also, it came from paradise, which we will see. And by the way, keeps talking about Aisha, Aisha, Aisha. She married him. And he had sex with her after he married her, okay? He didn't send his daughter to date young boys. You know, like what you do here. When you know the boys who are here today, they have only one thing on their mind, those boys. They're not going to be thinking about how smart this girl is, how wonderful her intellect is. He's going to think about one thing. We don't do that. Women this, during those days, 15 years ago, they had no universities to go to or TV or the internet. They got married at an early age like my mother did. So come on, get over it. He married her. And this is what's killing him. With a marriage contract to her like her sister was, like my mother was, like... Even my opponent, who was supposed to be coming today, he said his grandmother also married at an early age. So don't be. Um, Jalal talked about so many things. I'm not quite sure what the question was. It about the black stone? Okay. Well, um, he said Catholics kiss things. Well, if if they do with that sort of reverence, I'd say they're wrong. I kiss my wife and kids. Um, not rocks. Um, so you see, if you, I mean, just, just, just try to get the point here. If you're kissing a black rock, you're saying there's something very special about this rock, something that separates it and distinguishes it from billions of other rocks. Well, what is it? Um, I don't know, but it, it, seems, it seems strange, especially, especially, and here, here's, here's the crux. Um, when we examine where this came from. Now, Muslims will say, ah, you know, other people did it too. Abraham, you know, they, 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 they did these things. Well, there's no evidence for that anywhere. The only evidence we do have is that this was a pagan practice, and it was so special to the people of Mecca and the people around Mecca that it just looks like Muhammad didn't want to do away with it. And so he sort of, to use a Christian term, baptized it said, no, everyone agreed. You know, this is okay now. This is okay to kiss the black stone. I don't make too much of an issue over this, but I think it does show, again, this pattern we see. This pattern we see of Muhammad taking all these various practices and, you know, coming up and producing one sort of religion. Out of it. Again, I don't believe that he was doing this intentionally, but he's got all these practices and teachings and stories going around in his head. And then he comes out with Islam and gives, you know, gives the revelations. Um, I understand Muslims would not be impressed by any argument based on these things. But again, try, please, if you do anything, try to understand how these things, these arguments and your responses look to someone who's not, to someone who's not a Muslim. Um, I'll just say one, one, one quick thing about, <laughs> he said that all the letters uh, of, of my conclusion would refute every uh, messenger in the Bible. Really? Did Jesus think he was demon-possessed? Did Jesus? Uh, hmm? Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. This next question is very interesting in the order because it piggybacks on what David was about to say, and it's to David. Can you clarify the verse in the Bible where Jesus was tempted by the devil? I think this is, a, this is an excellent question. Um, in the Bible, it says Jesus was tempted. Uh, tempted is used in two different ways. One, if I'm trying to tempt someone, I am tempting them. Doesn't mean they're affected at all, but I'm tempting them. And the other is, oh, I've, I'm tempted. 
I'm being tempted. That means I, I have, I'm getting an inclination to do wrong. Uh, what we see in the New Testament is uh, that Jesus was tempted by the devil, not meaning he, was, he had an inclination to do wrong, but that Satan tried, threw everything he could at him to try and get him to do wrong. Um, I guess if this, if this came from a Muslim, I guess the, the idea here would be, you know, since Jesus had some sort of encounter with Satan, then this is like Muhammad, um, you know, delivering revelations from the devil or uh, being the victim of black magic or, or thinking he's demon-possessed. If that was the idea, I think there's no comparison there. We can't ever forget. We can't ever forget that Jesus uh, faced Satan and was completely victorious over him. Satan left. As for the rest of the demons, they were scared to death of Jesus. When Jesus showed up, people started flopping on the people who were possessed, started flopping on the ground, screaming, please don't judge us, please don't judge us. Well, who is he to be judging people? Just a regular guy? No. And so I think we see um, a major difference between Jesus and Muhammad, namely that, that Jesus had complete victory over the spiritual forces of darkness, and Muhammad uh, did not. You know, it's funny you asked the question because it was here. I don't have the time. Jesus, according to Christians, is the Lord, the God, okay? And according to them, he is the creator. So here comes the devil to tempt him. And this is the word in the Bible, to tempt him. The devil tells, he takes him here, there, up the temple, here, and there, shows him the kingdoms of everything. Worship me, I'll give you all this. And Jesus didn't tell him. How dare you? I created you. I am the creator. You are my slave. You're offering me what I own. You're offering me what I own. He was taken by the devil up and down, here and there, and offered to be a worshiper of Satan. Can you imagine your Lord? You degrade your Lord this way because he would have crushed him by saying, Satan, I created you. I am the Lord. I own America. You're offering me America? Come on. I am the devil, you're the devil, I am the God. So go away, die. It didn't happen. He was tempted by the devil. And the, verse there, the verses there are very clear about the humanity of the person they're describing here. Because I don't believe even Jesus was tempted by the devil in this way because it's a fabrication added to the Bible. Listen, from AZT to Z, what he mentioned also fits those in the Bible. And by the way, in the Old Testament, the prophets. By the way, according to Christians, Jesus revealed these verses to Moses. Go kill every man, woman, child, suckling an infant, and keep the virgins. Isn't it Jesus? According to you, he is the Lord. He says, what fills him doesn't fill the Muslims. No. What fills you is that you brought up a religion. You called a man your Lord who didn't ask for it, who didn't even mention it in any way or form that he is divine. And you want to tell me to prove, you picking this thing, uh, that thing about Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa I said, that Muhammad brought back monotheism after Christianity killed it. Okay, this next question is for Jalal. Are you allowed to leave Islam without penalty of death? Uh, no. I, yeah, who's this who said you? Yes, no. Uh, what is the punishment in the Bible for the town that talks about other gods killed them by the age of the sword? So we took it from you, I'm sorry. We took it from you. Uh, why are you, uh, you don't like my answer? We took it from you, just like stoning the uh, adulterer. Muhammad stones the adulterer. Well, the Jews, the Israelis did that too. We got it from you. So if you have anything to say, say it to Moses when you meet him. And when you meet Moses, tell him, how come you lived all your life on this earth, never said that Jesus is Lord? You didn't worship him. You didn't say Allah is three, God is three, three in one, same one. Listen, Muhammad's message is about this. They're dancing around it. Don't you see? They're bringing this stuff and that and that and that and that. I don't have time to answer all what he says. Why? Because when you're being negative, you can throw a hundred accusations in 35 minutes. And I can't respond to more than 10. I responded to only 12. Well, this is prepared. I don't have the time to do that. But what he picked here and there has nothing to do with the real message of Islam. Because he resurrected monotheism and because Islam took 
Christianity in the race for more converts and more followers today, this is what you should be thinking about. Not that he married Aisha. What is why are all these Muslims so impressed by Muhammad? Because what he did is right. And by the way, I want to finish with this. Every single story that I said is fabricated. I can prove it. Islamlife at gmail.com. Islamlife at gmail.com. Write the notes. I'll prove to you that they are a fabrication, including what I just mentioned. The same book, Ibn Ishaq, that he uses time after time, refutes what he says. Some stories in the same story. Ibn Ishaq is not a scholar of hadith, by the way. And I have, I'll, I'll explain it later. All right, seems to be a, a couple issues there. Uh, Jalal says that uh, he can prove these stories are fabricated. Yes, you can prove they're fabricated based on a flawed Muslim methodology. You can't prove that these are false based on the historical method because the historical method confirms them. So uh, be careful there. Um, he says, well, we got uh, killing people who leave Islam from the Bible. Well, I'd say you should have kept reading the Bible till the end before you adopted this practice. Uh, Muslims. <laughs> Muslims never, see, Muslims never seem to get the idea that there are different covenants in the Bible. There's a covenant with Adam. We know it. It's in, the, it's in the Bible. I'm not under this covenant. There's a covenant with Noah. It's in the Bible. I'm not under this covenant. There's a covenant with Moses. It's in the Bible. It lasted a long time. I am not under this covenant. Even in the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah said, there's going to be a new covenant. And then Jesus came and brought the new covenant in his blood. And from there... From then on, it was a message of love for everyone. It was a message of love for everyone. So if you want to say you're getting things from the Bible, uh, again, go to the last covenant that's meant for all people. Don't go to some earlier revel. I mean, this is, all, this is all there for us to learn from. But, I mean, think about it. The area where these laws that he's so fond of bringing up in debate, uh, if you had a world map about this big, those laws applied to an area about the size of maybe half the size of a postage stamp. When God gave his message that was for all of humanity, it was love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, uh, do good unto everyone, live in peace with all men. And this is, uh, this is very clearly at odds with the message of Islam. So. Okay, this next question is addressed to David. In Luke 12, 49, Jesus says, and I have not come to bring peace, but a division. But you say God loves everyone. Why did Jesus come to bring a division? If he loves everyone, why would there be a division of families? Well, I think this is very important. And uh, I know Jalal and lots of other Muslims make a, make a lot out of the passage where Jesus says, don't think that I'm come to bring peace, but a sword. Um, the parallel in Luke says, uh, I haven't come to bring peace, but division. Now, again, here, what we have to do is we have to uh, understand the context. I, I, I would assume that Muslims of all people want us to pay attention to context. I mean, think about it. If I walk around saying, according to the Quran, it says, uh, kill the infidels wherever you find them. That's just what it says. You would say, no, let's look at it, what this actually means um, for these people. The Jews believe that once the Messiah comes, he's going to you know, get rid of all the enemies, and then there's just going to be this complete harmony. And Jesus said, no, that's not what, that's not what I'm here for. Uh, ultimately, that will be the case. But now there is a message, the gospel, which must be preached. And so the gospel divides people. We see it. We see it right here. Um, I saw it in my, best friend's, uh, in my best friend's life when he uh, became a Christian, when he left Islam and became a Christian. And I saw the, the division that was caused because of this. But this is just a simple, it's a simple fact of history. Uh, Jesus brought a message. It's going to divide people. It's not going to make families just get along. Uh, the ultimate goal is peace with God and, and goodwill towards everyone. But as for now, we are in the stage when the gospel is being preached. People will uh, reject it. People will submit to it. And there's going to be conflict. What we must never forget here is when Jesus said he came to bring a sword, this was not literal. And we know this from the parallel. This was interpreted um, as Jesus um, bringing a message that causes uh, division. And we know this from the life of Jesus. He didn't kill anyone. We know this from the life of his followers. They never interpreted this as killing anyone. Um, and we know this from other things Jesus said. 
if someone hits you on one side of your cheek, turn to them the other. Don't retaliate. We're told this uh, throughout the New Testament. So uh, be careful how uh, I'm saying this specifically to Muslims who, who tend to take things out of context. Uh, be careful. That's funny how when you bring something from your book, you distance yourself from your Lord and Creator. Didn't Jesus tell the Moses people to go kill all these infants and suckling? Don't tell me it's for the Jews, so the Jews are allowed. I'm asking you this. Is it righteous for anyone, not, let alone you, Lord and Savior, let alone the Old Testament God, to say, kill women and children, infant and suckling? Is it righteous for that Lord to say, the town that calls to other gods, exterminate it, kill everybody? Then you come and tell me, Islam, I'm telling you, don't take, I'm not going to use the word. The same standard you apply here, you should apply there. You tell me he is the Lord, he must have revealed the Old Testament. So everything there came from your Lord. Do you stand behind your Lord when he issued these commandments? At that time at last, at least. Say when he issued it, it was the good thing to do. Was it the good thing to kill infants at the time of Moses? By the way, it didn't happen. Moses never did it. It's a fabrication added to the Bible. Was it good from your Lord and Savior to issue the commandment to Moses to kill infants and suckling and keep 32,000 virgins, or to go to a town that doesn't worship only one God, talks about other gods and exterminate it. Yes, Muhammad also came to divide families, and it's happening in your own families. And it's not because people don't know what Muhammad is about. It's because when they read about Muhammad and compare what you people say, what the Christians say in their religion, they come to the conclusion, I don't want that. I know God is one. He can't be three. The Lord in the Old Testament cannot be vicious and the Lord of war, and all of a sudden he's the war, the prince of peace. Well, he did that before. Did he apologize for what he ordered Moses to do? No, he didn't. He came, I came, to, he said, I came, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring here a fire. And this is what's happening. Strike you on the, on this cheek, give him the other one. Why didn't he do it in Iraq? Okay, this is our last question. There's, there's actually one more besides this, but we're, uh, we're way over time, and we're going to save the next question for the next debate. And, but I will go with this one more, and this is one is uh, addressed to Jalal. Why is Muslim heaven different from others? Do you have a different God? Why is Muslim heaven different from others? Um, simple. Because we live in this earth, we don't commit adultery, we don't drink, we don't cheat, we don't lie, we don't commit sin, we don't go dating with women and on Sunday go ask the priest for forgiveness or come here and ask for forgiveness and then keep doing it the next week. We don't do these things in this life because this is in obedience to our Lord. We respect his law. When he says don't commit adultery, we don't. We don't go with women. We don't show our bodies more than what you see maybe to here. Our wives, they cover because they're modest. They don't want the skin to be seen by other men, only by the husband. The treasure is kept for the husband. We obey our Lord, and we fast. You think on the day of judgment, we're going to go to hell when we did what Jesus used to do and Moses used to do, made under the law? That's what the, it says about Jesus. In Jannah, paradise, we're going to enjoy life there. We're going to have women. We're going to have children and food. You don't like your share? I'll take it. But don't come and tell me the Bible says this. The Bible, I'm already telling you the Bible is a forged document. You can't prove anything. You have nothing, not a single page original by those who wrote anything in the Bible. True or false even with what's in there. You have nothing compared to that Muslims have. Our resources, listen, he has no idea how we take the resources. It's not pick and choose. It's based on a scientific evidence that he doesn't have a clue what it is about. And I challenge him to another debate here today about how the Islamic resources are being brought together today. We talk about the chains of narration, hadith and seerah. I'm not going to say a single word from the Bible or about the Bible, only about the Islamic resources to prove to you that most Christians today have no clue what it means to us to say, this is an authentic hadith, this is not. And why?
Well, Jalal challenged me to uh, another debate. I'd be happy to debate uh, again on, uh, on many topics. I, I, I like you, Jalal, and uh, you're a good debater, and I look forward to uh, many more uh, interactions of this nature. Um, I do know what the Muslim method is. I just reject it. If you put the Muslim method back beside the historical method, they're completely different. Uh, they had the same basic goal, getting at the truth, but the way the Muslim uh, scholars did it is nowhere near the way that a modern historian would do it. And if I have to pick, I'm going to go with the way a modern historian uh, would examine this. Uh, the question was, why is Muslim heaven uh, different from others? And there certainly is. Uh, I know that there are many descriptions of heaven in Islam that uh, don't uh, revolve around sensual uh, delights, um, but there are many that do. And I think it's interesting, uh, Aisha said in Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad loved three things of this world most, perfume, food, and women. She said he got the perfume and the women, but not the good food. But it's just interesting because this is what, this is what according to Aisha, Muhammad uh, loved most. And when we look at the Muslim descriptions of heaven, it just happens to be these things that Muhammad loved most. Now, I'm not criticizing the idea that there's sex in heaven or something. If there's sex in heaven, great. Um, the only point, though, is uh, for Christians, the emphasis is not on anything uh, sensual or, or physical. If there, again, if there are those things, cool. Uh, the emphasis is on coming to, coming to know God, coming face to face with Jesus, and being able to, to, uh, to know God in all his glory. Uh, when I think about that, wow. And so that's the emphasis in Christianity. Um, and Islam may be different. Uh, but again, all this comes down to uh, who's right, because Islam might be true for all we know, and, it's, and Christianity might be true uh, for all we know. Um, the question is, where's the evidence point? We haven't talked about Christianity. We've talked about Islam. I can say, uh, most certainly, the evidence does not point to Islam. Well, on behalf of Arabic Christian Perspective, I want to thank you for taking the time to come.